cohesion team asked me about uh, how the message of multi-agency response and how uh, the pastoral care offered by local authorities is distributed to ethnic minority areas, uh, especially around those areas of uh, people that have come from countries where they have regimes that make them very suspicious of the police and local government. And it, it set me thinking about perhaps we could, we could incorporate that within uh, the exercise. It's a known fact that if you prepare communities to understand what they need to do or what is available for them in a major emergency, it is not as catastrophic for them when the emergency happens. The purpose of this morning was to uh, have a joined up training exercise working together with the police, local authority and also the voluntary sector to understand the workings of the Survival Reception Centre and how it uh, affects the casualties of the incident. This is just to give a little bit of flavour and overview of what we're going to be doing on the actual day. Um, the planning's been happening about three, three months now. We've had several meetings, uh, at North Wales Police, Wrexham Borough Council and I've been involved uh, from the voluntary sector. Uh, to actually plan the event, what we want to test, how we're going to test it. So it's quite a long process. This is a train crash. There's 12 gear, and that's 12 bits of information. It's very rare that we have the opportunity to do a multi-agency exercise such as its nature. So what we've done today is to bring everyone together and gone through the process. So hopefully on the day of the exercise, touch wood, it'll all go right. Right, well, uh, Koshi, welcome. And first of all, thank you all for volunteering. It's going to be the result of a few months of planning where we've identified all the main players. The people briefing today, they are very much part of the main players because without the role players, we wouldn't have an exercise. They must realise that some of the things we've asked them uh, involves, you know, that they've got to have, uh, enact as though they've seen someone die. They're youngsters, we had to ask were they content with that because in real life incidents, uh, you know, trauma is one of the biggest issues when you're dealing with people immediately after the incident. And you're going to either be made up, I think British Red Cross are going to provide some makeup, and you are going to be casualties. We've also got uh, people from the voluntary sector and they have a script to work to. There will be different levels of shock, of stress, of trauma. It's going to be a crashed train coming off the tracks going into the river there's going to be people drowned there the river is uh, we're going to have to sort of paint the picture without seeing it but the river will be bubbling it'll be something similar to um, the Cumbria floods <laughs> <laughs> It'll test uh, protocols that we have uh, planned for, um, but you never know that they're going to work until you actually test. And whatever happens, we will learn from that, and we will take those learning outcomes uh, into a review, review of the plan that we've already written. It's important that the community cohesion team is here, but there's also a variety of other teams from Rex and Council here today, all with the concern and, and resources and the well-being to help communities. So I think it's very important that everybody is treated equally and their health is the main concern. The person's left, I just want to establish where the person goes to. Because what we don't want them to do is them just wandering off. If I don't know the answer, then I will find out for you. Destination, in other words, are they staying here? Or are they, are they getting transferred to hospital? Is that we were going to do that then? Initially, as people come in, so we've got a count of how many are coming in, but also the officers and people inside know who's been registered and who hasn't. And 
and we'll take you through. Thank you very much. The people will come in, they'll be evacuated from a fixed site, they will go behind the screens behind me, which is where the HAP team, the Humanitarian Assistance team, will give them uh, reassurance, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, that's what people want for a start, that reassurance factor. And also you can triage any first aid or anything like that. We've got some challenges already of um, you know, moving the people in. It's, it's difficult to try and keep the realism going. We're trying to do that. Some of the uh, injured people or the evacuees are looking as though they, they are traumatised. You know, we've used makeup to try and make it, to make it as real as possible. The idea then is the documentation officers will then come to collect individual people to fill in the casualty or the evacuee forms. They'll be documented and then we'll send them details to the casualty bureau where it's all recorded and centralised. The other form, it's a duplicate form, so the other part of the form is returned to the local authority and the local authority will then do what is necessary for the other welfare issues. Well, she's got no injuries and she's come from the train crash, so she's, she, she's relatively she local. Do you have an next of kin? Make arrangements for your dog, you know, until we find out what's happening more. Is that OK? What we try to do is, rather than give uh, the people who are filling out the forms an, an instant sort of uh, panic, we try to bring in some easier role players to start off with so they get used to seeing what the forms are. If you can imagine an incident, um, train crash, flooding or anything like that, you will normally see on the television, uh, call this number. What happens then is you have lots of people ringing up saying, my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife, my partner was on that train, was in that flood area, etc. And they're reported as missing people. Now what you've got here is a nucleus of people that have been evacuated from a fixed site. They will come to this site and we'll get their details. So you've got two systems working. You've got a system with the end of the phone filling in forms about missing people. We're filling in forms here about people that have been evacuated and are safe and well. And the idea now is we will embed them forms and that data to match them people up. So in due course, this data is mixed and matched and we find out who is missing, who is injured, etc. All the parts that are currently accounted for are currently accounted for. I'm not signed. Oh, you're not signed. I am registered disabled, so I need it. Okay, well, you do, do you need to be seen by Red Cross? No. No, just, okay, just, just come through and then set yourself down. I think the challenges here for the agencies today are about all agencies coming together with a variety of skills, resources, and making sure people are safe comfortable and well looked after. Any medical problems are seen to and people may be missing relatives, friends, are comforted and um, looked after well. In real life incident we'd have St John's here which we have tonight because even though they've been triaged at the scene people can develop headaches, injuries, um, trauma as the evening develops. Well we have someone here medically trained who can identify uh, and perhaps move to hospital if required. We'll keep her in here for a bit. And that is what I'm really hoping for, is that we can get the message out to the community that if there's an emergency, we can help you. There's nothing to be frightened of at the uniform or with local government's help. <coughs> Just going to put a dressing on her eye, just keep it warm. Do you speak any English words at all? Minimal? No, no, nothing, nothing. Okay, that's fine. Are you hurting anywhere else? Any other injuries? Anywhere? Nothing? Nothing? Okay. What, what reference or what um, uh, details are you taking here? Is it just... Oh, I'm taking these numbers. numbers. Yeah, you got injuries. Fantastic. Yeah. And, then, and, then that, and that's it. So so that, so because everything else has gone through. Yeah. There. Brilliant. I just want to make sure there's no duplication. So no, that's okay. Okay, thank you. The next set will be more challenging, more language issues. Um, getting them to use the books more and the interaction. Yeah. You come with me, I'll get, get you to sit down and have a nice cup of tea or coffee. We're hoping the protocols and the procedures are going to be tested, whether we've got the right approach, whether we've got the right mix of police and uh, local authority. It was useful today to introduce the phrase books to people who've never seen them before. They're a new thing that deal with people who have language problems and need a bit of assistance in filling in the forms. Every language is available and they can match the phrases and the questions to whatever language they can. So you've got the, 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 the English version, 
matching up against the whatever language you need, whether it be Spanish, Portuguese, any language you can name is in that book. Right, okay. Diabetic? Diabetic. Yeah, diabetic. Uh, ah, right, okay. Can you stay with him? Yeah, no problem. What we've got now is we've got people who are really engaging with this. It's the first time we've really done this with the local authority. So based on that, it's good to see uh, the police and the HAT team, the local authorities, British Red Cross, all interacting to get all this process sorted because we want to, we want to make the mistakes here to tweak the process as opposed to in a real life incident. And let's get it right, this could happen tonight, tomorrow, at least now, we've practised it and hopefully it'll be better. Your mum and dad did that. Got a postcode then? Yeah. Okay then, so you're going to hospital, so if you come near the side and, and out to the side. Get a drink, yeah. yeah. Okay. Some kids speak English, yeah. you know, yeah. so... Yeah. And so this, this, this would be a normal sort of accident. Today has highlighted some of the issues that minority communities face um, coming into a real life situation and some of the issues that the agencies face when dealing with minority communities. So I think today's exercise has been really successful and there will be some points that we'll learn from and take forward in the event of a real life situation. It's interesting to find out that there is no next of kin or contact number. And they are key questions that will be asked yeah. whether it's yeah. a survivor centre yeah. or an yeah. evacuation centre. That's a good idea, is that when, when these forms are next done, is that surnames, it's got the, the number yeah. next to it, yeah. so we immediately know which one it refers to. I think we'll feed that back. So far, so good. I mean, this key learning for us is some process tweaks that we need to do, which is still part of what we're doing. Um, some of the forms and some of the internal processes will need to actually tweak after this um, and it's good because I'll sit down with my team to say well, what worked, what didn't work and hopefully at the end of it we will have you know, a better process jointly with that team. We've had a shift changeover halfway. The way we were going to do it, we had one documentation team started and they did the setup with the HAT team and now what we've done now, they've gone through the process several times and we've done our shift changeover so our second team are in place and running through the new casualties and evacuees. We've seen here today quite a variety of people from different backgrounds, different languages, different communities. Just go through this form. Um, at your, at whatever speed you feel comfortable. It's important that we look after all the communities in the area, more so people with language difficulties or disabilities or, or ethics. For instance, females who won't see a male doctor. It's important that we take care of the people and look after their health uh, and well-being in the best way possible. Exercise. I think overall it's gone very, very well. Uh, I think so. You know, it, it's shown how we can work together. Some challenges, and that's the old idea, isn't it? You know, it's, it's an exercise, and the point of an exercise is to learn from it and get better. You know, four months hard work, and it comes to the actual day of the exercise, and it's out of your hands. But as long as you train the staff, it will go smoothly. Because I think tonight, everything that was supposed to happen happened. We've got some learning. Uh, outcomes from what's happened tonight. We'll be uh, having a structured debrief later in the month where we'll be looking at best practices for the future. Special mention has got to go through the actors, the play actors we use. They are key, they've got to be right, so we get that input from them. I mean, okay, we're paid to do this, there's a lot of volunteers standing behind us that don't get paid for it. Hat off to them. <laughs>